calcium is the transporter of the most of your nutrients. And, and so uh, opening up calcium channels within the, 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 the root membrane allows for a lot more uh, nutrients to come into the plant. You know, sometimes we think micro is just being um, less important. No, they're micro because they need less of them, but they're equally important. A healthy plant is not seen as a food source for pests and pathogens. Um, and typically those plants, when healthy, have a higher BRICS level. We can have a plant that looks, in our eyes, looks like a relatively healthy plant, but it could be low BRICS. And it could be low BRICS because we've been feeding a lot of extra nitrogen. And Will bugs be attracted to healthy plants? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Av Sai and Mark Bowell on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and hit the notifications for future video releases. Let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure to check out our monthly membership. For as little as $2.99 a month, you get access now to 105 members, 2,586 photos, 274 videos, 21 files, 1,106 shared links, and much, much more. You actually, I would not, when, I, when I said, let do, should we go further or should we go up? The further was minerals. My question was, what minerals do you find that bacteria seem to utilize or consume more than other minerals? And then the other question beyond that was, what minerals have you found to be the, uh, the to identify to be the best IPM? Uh, nat for natural, like best, uh, like uh, making sure to have those right trace minerals. And the third one, which was getting into sodium bicarbonate, calcium bicarbonate, and potassium bicarbonate uh, for using for pH up. And, and should we use a calcium bicarbonate earlier in veg? And as we go later in file, maybe switch over to a potassium bicarbonate if we needed to go pH up. Brilliant. And then, and then get rid right. of the sodium bicarbonate because sodium adds up into the soil. So those are like three things that popped out. Like, please, any, any one of those you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I did want to just make sure that I, I'm not an advocate of, and, and I know that the, a lot of the early interest in compost teas was to use them as foliars and, and use that, that whole concept of the fact that if, if, your, if your plant um, can, can, if your plant leaf surface can be covered, your phylosphere can be covered with beneficial microbes, then, then a pathogenic microbe won't, won't be uh, able to land on, on that leaf surface and survive, or it'll be outcompeted and so on and so forth. Um, when it really comes down to it, if you can produce an incredibly healthy plant, a healthy plant with a good waxy layer to it, a healthy plant that can actually have its own exudates. So plants have all of these endophytes. And if you have botrytis that lands on your plant, botrytis meaning bud rot and gray mold, um, your plant actually has some endophytes that are antibacterial or antifungals, and they can go and, and immediately be released from within the plant and fight off, off that botrytis or gray mold. So it's important, you know, once again, optimal, optimal photosynthesis, and, and then, um, you know, the plant can do the rest if it's got a living soil system with it. Um, when it comes to minerals, you know, you, you, uh, you really can't avoid getting a little bit of everything, right? So you do need your nitrogen, you need your phosphorus, your potassium, all those primary nutrients. When it comes to those um, secondary nutrients, definitely calcium and sulfur are, are two critical ones. Calcium, of course, because calcium is the transporter of the most of your nutrients. And, and so uh, opening up calcium channels within the, the, uh, the root membrane allows for a lot more uh, nutrients to come into the plant. And, and um, when it comes to a lot of those microbes, there's, it's, it's all about those trace minerals. And, and um, um, for, for proper enzymatic reactions, you need the zinc, you need iron, you need um, um, selenium, you need copper. Um, there's, there's really no avoiding any one of these trace minerals. So it's really important to, to really have a good source of trace minerals. And if you, um, uh, which, which of course your trace minerals can come from things like, um, um, you know, your rock dust, glacial rock dust, basalt rock dust, um, azomite, um, which, you know, essentially stands for the A to Z of, 
of minerals and uh, and trace elements, right? That's the acronym. Um, and then things like kelp, you know, kelp or or a dehydrated uh, um, salt water, um, seawater. Those are great sources of, of of trace minerals, and they'll have that zinc and the copper and the selenium and the uh, cobalt, uh, the nickel. These really small small. You know, sometimes we think micro is just being um, less important. No, they're micro because they need less of them, but they're equally important and especially in, important in, um, in things like uh, enzymatic reactions for bacteria in terpene synthesis. Um, one I, I've kind of uh, neglected to mention is, is manganese. Manganese is so critical. We, we talk a lot about it right now in terms of, of uh, SARS-CoV-2. Um, so important for viruses that, that we have manganese in our system because manganese is really important in terms of, of fighting off viruses. I got a question about the, um, the, uh, the microbiology and you were talking about feeding the microbiology and, uh, and the different microbiology taking over of the, for the, the exudates, how they feed the exudates to the plants, right? And the BRICS levels in plants, because people said with the high BRICS levels, you can monitor it has a lot of, a lot of I guess, a lot of uh, sugar or carbohydrates or whatever in the plant. Does that mean it has a lot to feed the microbiology? So if you have high BRICS levels, then there's a lot of uh, exudates available to feed that microbiology so the plant can defend itself and build up that waxy layer better? I, I, think, I think you nailed it right on the head. Um, so uh, Around bricks, what, what's your thoughts around bricks? Yeah, so um, bricks for any of your viewers, I'm, I'm sure your viewers are, are quite knowledgeable about bricks, but just in, in general, it's you know a concept came uh, from a researcher in, in doing vineyard research in, in Switzerland, I believe, and created a, a refractometer, knowing to, that, that the sap uh, of a plant, um, when held up to a light, is going to refract light in, at, at different levels, depending on the density of what's in that sap. And so, so we, we loosely call um, um, this, the sap as, as sugar. And we measure the sugar content, but it's it's the, essentially the total dissolved solids that is in that sap, um, which includes some vitamins and amino acids and so on. But for the most part, it's going to be a form of sugar. Um, and and there's been a train a, a theory, and and um, I, I wholeheartedly believe in it that certain insects and pathogens will not come to a healthy plant. You know, so when, you know, Albrecht, William Albrecht and, and uh, folks like uh, Phil Callahan and Kerry Reams, they really put the ideas out there that a healthy plant is not seen as a food source for pests and pathogens. Um, and typically those plants, when healthy, have a higher BRICS level. And we loosely have, have just random, not randomly, but we specifically say, hey, if you can get around 12, 14 or higher in BRICS levels, um, then, then it's not seen as a food source. And it's not seen as a food source because it, in fact, is somewhat toxic to, to um, the insect uh, um, uh, metabolism, right? So right. oftentimes so when, when we feed a plant uh, a lot of nitrate nitrogen, we are watering down that plant. And, and I think we know it. We, we know that when we buy those strawberries, uh, and I, I'll pick on, on California because we get a lot of California strawberries up here and yeah, bite into it. And the ones we get here are very watery and then they don't have a lot of flavor, right? No different than, than your cannabis. If, if your cannabis has been fed a lot of nitrate nitrogen, it might even be a little larfier. You don't have as much density in that, in that bud. And you're not going to have that aroma. You're not going to have that taste that you can have when you have a higher bricks level. You also will know that when you take um, uh, a can that has a lower bricks and uh, it's not going to have the shelf life. It's either it's going to turn high, quick, more quickly into CBN um, or it's just going to go off in its, in its flavor much quicker. Whereas at higher bricks, um, buds will, will maintain their kind of their, their flavor and aroma for at least a year sometimes I, you know, most, most of my cans is gone after about a year, but, but oftentimes it <laughs> smells as almost as good as it went in into that jar. Those are higher bricks, um, buds. 
And um, I think it's, it's something that we want to continue to look as a, as a little tool to say, are we doing the right things? And, and if, if we're not, if we're not hitting those BRICS levels, what else is it that we can do to make sure that we're, we're getting up to that level? So you want to use it as a measuring tool or how do, good we're doing, right? So me and Aaron have been having this conversation the last couple of days about the BRICS, and I'm working on spider mites because spider mites is a big problem for a lot of people. And once you got them, <laughs> you have them, right? Right. So uh, I the other day we were talking privately that uh, I, I caught on to another interview that we did with another guest that he was saying the same thing you were saying, right? And that as your bricks level was higher, your mites won't attack or will be less susceptible to mites. So I'm saying maybe we're approaching this mite problem a whole the wrong way. Maybe we should approach it a different way by keeping our bricks level really high. We'll be less susceptible to mites. We won't have to spray, won't have to uh, to deal with it. I, I, I think yeah, I think there's a lot of information in the SAP. And, you know, right now that science hasn't necessarily adopted SAP analysis, especially in, in, uh, in North America. Uh, in, in Europe, SAP analysis is more common. You can send um, um, leaf tissue to, to many places and they'll actually do a SAP analysis for you. In that SAP analysis, they'll, they'll often look into what's, what's actually in that SAP. And, and we can actually nail down which minerals are in there. Um, I, I, I highly, if, if you're a little esoteric, uh, you know, a little metaphysical, I, I highly recommend reading Phil Callahan's uh, Tuning Into Nature. Um, I, I believe Phil, Phil is still living. Uh, I, I think he's, uh, he's about 91, 92 years old and living, I believe, in California. So he'd be an amazing, amazing guest if he's still um, uh, up, up to those things. But Tuning into Nature is just a phenomenal book, um, and it, it does highlight the idea that pests and pathogens are attracted to unhealthy plants. And we can have a plant that looks, in our eyes, looks like a relatively healthy plant, but it could be low bricks. And it could be low bricks because we've been feeding a lot of extra nitrogen, and, and you will see that. So one of the goals that we have when we feed nitrate, and, and I, I pick on nitrate, nitrogen, and I, and I only mean it, it's great. You, you need nitrate, nitrogen, in early veg. That's, that's really important to use nitrate, nitrogen, and veg because it's going to promote that nice green growth, and we need that. After that, we could use a more uh, ammonia-based type nitrogens, um, you know, something like a feather meal, something that's a little bit slower in releasing, uh, sometimes your alfalfa meals will have more of that ammonia-based nitrogen, um, whereas something like blood meal. Blood meal will have a lot of nitrate nitrogen, hen manure, nitrate nitrogen. We don't want to be feeding those late into veg and, and definitely not into flour. Um, we might I mean, want to use amino acids um, because the goal in, in a root system is to take that nitrate nitrogen and by the time it leaves the root system, it should be uh, an amino acid, right? It, you, want the, you want those um, nitrogen to be converted into peptides and turned into you know, um, um, you know, amino acids and then, and then hopefully turn those into proteins. When, you, when we think of spider mites, one of the main reasons we see spider mites, and, and I'm probably speaking, well, it, it could definitely happen outdoors, is when we hit really high temperatures, uh, what happens in our plants is that um, they will start doing photorespiration. Um, typically, respiration happens in, in, in the darkness, but if you reach really high temperatures and you don't have a healthy enough plant that can reduce the stresses of high heat, um, you can actually get photorespiration, and that'll turn some of your uh, nitrogen and your proteins back into ammonium. Uh, and or you may have high levels of nitrate. That's seen as a food source for spider mites. That's why you get spider mites. So it's, it's a lot about making sure, controlling your nitrogen, making sure you don't have any nitrate nitrogen in your sap or any ammonia in your sap. All of it should be turned into uh, proteins. Just to ask a quick question and to kind of bring this out actually into the surface when we think about nature, that nitrate nitrogen it only, is really only there for a few days after rainfall, and then it's converted over to ammonia nitrogen, right? 
And so it's, uh, so if we're trying to mimic nature, that nitrate nitrogen, I mean, really we, instead of mimicking how much rainfall is in our local area, we want to consider how much rainfall is in the areas that produce the highest quality herb. Yeah. Right. And so then maybe mimic that uh, water cycle for the nitrates and, uh, and, and then think about it in that viewpoint versus uh, how much nitrogen we should be giving based upon their recommendations. Do you, th- it, it, you know, and, and I, I, I go back to, you know, Elaine Ingham again, when, when she first, when I first met her and, and, and had those conversations and she was giving her presentations, she'd always talk about that maple tree, right. And, and it talked about that maple tree sending down a very syrupy sap in the spring. It was dedicated to, to trying to attract a particular type of bacteria that would produce a lot of nitrate nitrogen, right? So the plant was trying to say, hey, I need nitrate nitrogen. It's springtime. I'm going to, I have to produce a lot of green leaves. Let me, let me get the right bacteria around my rhizosphere. All of a sudden, you know, it says, hey, I don't need any more nitrate nitrogen. The sap also changed, right? It's no longer as sweet. It's, it's definitely more starchy. It's feeding a whole bunch of different types of bacteria that are going to produce different things, whether it's more phosphorus, or more potassium, or, or fungi that are going to be protecting the roots or, you know, whatever. So as, as you said, Mark, you know, and, 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 and also just to follow the, the whole, our whole idea, crop steering is becoming really popular within Canada. But crop steering is really mimicking what nature does in itself, right? In the springs, we get lots of water. Um, we, we have certain types of nutrients. Um, and then as, as the plant goes into summer and into fall, it's get, you, know, you get a little drought stress, you get a little colder temperatures. That's exactly what crop steering is. It's mimicking nature. And that's what we're trying to do with our nutrients as well. It's so important to recognize that um, the, the soil is, is so incredibly dynamic that within seconds you can have species that are turning off and species that are turning on. And, when, and once again, thanks to all the work that Elaine Ingham did to highlight this, we now know that there's, there's thousands and thousands of different species 